さあさあもういいんけかよっとととないんじゃないかうるみさあめてしらんきょうほどわあこのちゃんほんじけばあばらにおそかてよほのれいやおいおそいにけかよほどしんげんでたかんすぱっていばとふたやほんぼぼいた Welcome to Talking Orangutans Podcast 14. I'd like to introduce Eric Palmer, in my opinion, world famous photographer. I'm sure a lot of people would like to disagree. Eric's from Stellenbosch. I've known him or known about him for at least 20 years since high school. We had about a two hour talk that covers a lot of interesting topics. I'm sure a lot of people will find some of it boring. Main thing is talking about his experience as a photographer, how he got into it. I don't think we talk too much about the equipment that he uses, but more what is he looking for in pictures, what riders does he enjoy taking pictures of, and he's taken pictures of world famous guys like Sam Reynolds, Nico Fink, and the list goes on and on. He does dark fest,、um, he does night harvest, there's a whole lot of stuff. Plus, he does a lot of pictures for just some of the local guys, and he practices, and I think he just helps out. So,、um, we talked about, for example, Sam Reynolds at the Dog Fest. We talked a lot about the Trail Screw, it's a local cycling group that builds a lot of trails, and they do a fantastic job. How to get into the industry, some politics that is common in all <laughs> cycling industries around the world. And just what good local riders are there, who deserves a little bit of more credit, and just generally catching up. I hope you guys enjoy it. You can watch it on YouTube, which you're probably doing right now, but go check it out on anchor.fm. You can see Talking Orangutans. Check out Instagram. Please follow, please like, subscribe. You can also listen to this on Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes, Google Podcasts. Check it out, guys.、Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Share it to friends. Break it up if two hours is way too long for you. Wicked. Cool. We love it. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still not getting used to that.、Uh, welcome, dude. Oh, thank you.、Um, guys. Podcast 14, I think, today. And this is Eric Palmer, <laughs> which technically we grew up together, but、uh, so we've known each other for, I think, 20 years roughly. Yeah, probably. Because you were in primary school year as well. Yeah. In Rhenish. Yeah. And then Paul Roos. Yeah. And he's been, I think, the only rollerblader in Stalabosch. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there have been one or two others, but.、Uh... You're no, the only they, good one. They, they, no, no, no. There were a few good ones. There was old Ricky Spunnerberg back in the day. Okay. And,、uh, but otherwise, yeah, a few have been moving in and out and whatever. So we've had、uh, Chris van der Maver, one of my friends,、uh, was staying here and he's in Somerset West now. So. Okay. So he was one of the three yeah, rollerbladers yeah, three, in the three area. Three <laughs> and, we st- and basically, just to introduce him, he takes, I don't know how to frame it, extreme sports photographer. Yeah, pretty much. Does that? Yeah. Action sports. I mean, I shoot anything, but that's why that's what I what I specialize in. Yeah, action sports. Yeah, because you do. Do you like wildlife and?、Uh, I do, but、uh, most of those, it's just like when people go out on a wildlife shoot, it's like, oh, this is a five day shot, and they sat in the car at a water hole for five、yeah. days to get one shot, and I'm like, yeah, maybe when I'm like fifty or sixty. Yeah. But、uh, right now, I can move around. So I'm thinking of those those guys that do Animal Planet. Yeah. I'm like, how long did you lie to see the white lion or the white yeah. leopard? Yeah, that's where you watch the behind the scenes. Like, the shots are amazing, and you're like, how the hell did they even get this? Yeah. And then you see they were there for like three months or four months in like a little hide waiting for a bird or yeah. something. Yeah. But do、like, you like the actual. No, I love that. I like trying to take the, the landscapes and the.、Uh, I, I do enjoy like everything because. Like, if you shoot different stuff, it makes you shoot what you enjoy shooting differently.、Mm. So, if you start shooting landscapes, it makes you start looking at your action shots differently. And then you start almost shooting landscape action shots, if you know what I mean. Where, yeah. Where you're more worried about what's around the jump or more worried about what's around the action than you, the action itself, because that you can't control. That you know the guy's going to do what he's going to do. Okay, okay. So, you need to worry about what you can control. So, you move around and worry. So, shooting macro, like really close up stuff on insects and stuff is super fun. As well, yeah,、uh, shooting landscapes, shooting, yeah, it's pretty much anything. So, what、cool. you're saying is that if you do do a lot of different styles, remind yourself which style you're doing today and try to incorporate maybe something. But remember, yeah, well, you're doing it's, action it's, sports today, if, not landscape. If, if I had to like say tie it into music, it's like a dude if he likes playing fucking rock or whatever, yeah, but then one day he plays blues, yeah. 
that blues is going to help his rock because he's going to maybe have like a little bit of a different influence now. Yeah. So his rock is going to have something slightly different to yeah. everybody else's because mm. he's going to be like playing around with actually different influences from outside what he's interested in. Whether if you just play rock all the time, you kind of get into like a bit of a, a channel almost. Yeah. And like if I just shoot action all the time, even though I love it, like it gets boring because I feel myself doing the same thing and approaching the same thing the same way because yeah. like, and you get stuck into a routine. And as soon as I start feeling that, I'm like, shit, when people are looking at my shots, they're going to see I'm shooting the same jump the same way all the time i need yeah. to do something different so shooting landscape or shooting macro like just shooting something completely different mm. when you get back to the action you're like okay cool maybe i can handle this in a different way and it gives yeah. you different ideas so how many pictures have you taken where the guy actually by accident jumped out of the camera shot <laughs> quite a few <laughs> quite a few because <laughs> me as a like like when I hang out with Kurs and Andre, we get to a point where they now doing like you've done your warm ups, yeah, and now they're going onto the big stuff, yeah. and I can't do it, yeah. But I love watching it, so I normally go onto the camera, like the yeah, cell phone, yeah, yeah, and then start. And then, like yeah. the first twenty pictures, they continue to jump out of the camera, yeah, angle. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, like the first downhill shoot that I did, like because I wasn't used to the speed and I wasn't used to shooting, so yeah. like the guys were also halfway out of the frame, or like the, <laughs> the front wheels cut off, or like I mean. Uh, even some of them my mom joined and she was like quite interested to see because like I mean I was starting and she was teaching and I was teaching a bit with her yeah. uh, so she came to the downhill races after seeing a few of the things that I was doing and same thing like she was missing the riders completely like some shots where there was just not even so a just rider timing. so yeah like that that gets much better the more you do it um, because like I, you, I don't know if you remember like those old freaking Nintendo games but you yeah. had like Olympics and you had the skeet shooting one where it like fires off these little balls and you have to get the timing of the ball in the block yeah like when I was a kid, I was useless at that. Okay. But then after shooting for a couple of years, I randomly went to a friend's house and we played that game and I was like getting like almost every single one. And I was no. like, what the fuck has happened? You know, like <laughs> all of a sudden I'm a boss at this and I haven't played it in years. And yeah. I was just like, oh, obviously my job is all about timing and like making sure that you're getting it. So every time it, I, I'm just used so to it. So I assume like certain photographers are good at maybe getting the frame, maybe getting the angles, but their timing's off. Exactly. And like you need everything together for action. Like if a guy's doing a tuck no hand and you get his arms bent, like that shot's deleted, no matter how good your lighting and your, your composition and everything is, like yeah. it's useless. Nobody's going to want to see it. When was the last time you took a photo shoot and you were super bummed out because something went wrong from like, an angle or like you think you got a shot and then you didn't get it like do you remember i'm sure that happened a lot early days like you get home and you're like sick we're gonna look at it and then it's like fuck i didn't get it uh actually most of the time i'm pretty lucky the, the the one of the worst things that happened was actually on my first shoot where i got home and then the card got corrupted so like i got introduced to recovery software really quickly which was a good thing yeah um some of the shots were ruined because like it was uh, where the where the card connected with the with the pins in the camera yeah like one of the pins was a little bit bent and not connecting properly so like some of the shots had like this weird like striping across it yeah and but like a few of them were saveable mm. um but yeah that's pretty much the worst thing that's happened like sometimes i have issues with like flashes misfiring and stuff like that yeah uh, like if the trigger is not working or not communicating or like the flash is in a funny place but yeah, then I just like hustle and make sure and like take a little while to set it up and then, then yeah. keep going. But uh, Is flash important? Uh, for the way that I shoot, it's one of my favorite things to do. Because I think, I don't know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like what I like about you is like if I see a picture between a bunch of other pictures, I can see that's an Eric Palmer picture. Yeah. Have you tried to do that or that's something that just happened? No, like like I've, I've spoken to a lot of people about that type of thing and it's like everybody's like, oh, I, I need to find my style or something. You, you don't find your style. Yeah. If you skate, you don't find your style. You just skate and your style finds you. You are who you are. It's going to come out. So yeah. the way you think, the way you look at the world, the way you want things to be, that's how your shots are going to be eventually. Yeah. So everybody has a slightly different handwriting everybody has a slightly different throw everybody has a slightly different you know everybody's slightly different in their mm. own way with their style and stuff so it it just naturally comes out the more you work the more you're drawn to what you enjoy yeah. so. but flash is part of your style of photography yeah 100%. you rarely shoot anything without a flash uh no these days i've actually been shooting quite a lot without flash okay just because like shooting in the daytime it's kind of pointless like okay. the flashes the flashes that i have at least are not strong enough um, I've been thinking about buying like stronger studio lights, but then you need like proper light stands and heavy batteries and stuff like that. And you need and a guy helping you carrying it around. Yeah. And the thing is like for the stuff I shoot, I mean, I do it all the time. So I know what I, what I need. 
And if I had big lights like that for a lot of the stuff, I wouldn't use it. So it doesn't mm. really warrant spending that money on using something like yeah. on maybe one every you 10 You take a thousand pictures and 50 is usable with a yeah or, or it's just like I, I can't get to the places that i need to be like i'll be there i mean you know what a, what a downhill mountain bike trail looks like I, I can't go and like walk with a huge studio flash every time and like set it on the edge <laughs> of a cliff or you know what i mean like it's just not practical whether like just a small little normal flash and, yeah. and the pocket wizard and a light tripod like that's super easy for me to run down the trail with it's super easy for mm. me to set up like and most of the time it's got enough power um, but yeah, these days I normally just wait until like either like a nice overcast day or I wait for, for sunset and that type of thing. And then, okay. then the flashes actually pop like crazy because obviously during the day with the sun like super bright, you need like crazy strong lights and the flashes are, are just not enough sometimes. So as we sit here, um, people can maybe, if this is on a computer that they're watching, they can maybe grab their phone and check you out on Instagram. Some of the pictures that we're talking about, it's yeah. At a freaking Eric? Yeah. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people get confused. In my mind, it was supposed to be really simple, but uh, <laughs> for some reason, uh, it's a little bit... So, yeah, a so, freak in Eric. Yeah, so it's like African, okay, but with a little bit of a twist. So, so a, don't worry, a, I'll... A freak in Eric. Go check in the description box. Uh, it will be popping up while we watch this. Yeah. <laughs> what would you be your speciality? Because, like, if you take action sports, yeah. it's motocross... Um, downhill mountain biking, BMXing, dirt jumping. Yeah. Like, what is your speciality? Um, my favorite is dirt jumping. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just remember the first time I shot it, it was super cool because, like, I, I enjoy being out in nature. Yeah. Uh, like, the only thing that, like, drew me to the streets was skating and what I enjoyed doing with that. Um, but uh, I, I've grown up on nature reserves. I've been always kind of in the bush and stuff. Because so. your parents were photographers? or uh, Just my mom. My mom was actually a potter the whole time I was growing up. And a then potted? A, uh, no, not a potted. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, a potter. A she potter. used to, yeah, she used to do pottery and, uh, yeah, and teach people pottery and stuff like that. So she's always been kind of creative and in the arts and that type of thing. Um, and then later on, when I was in high school, she started getting into photography. Okay. And it was all the same sort of theory and principle from her pottery that she mm. applied to the photography and, and just being different and, and doing whatever she wanted and not yeah. listening to other people. And, and uh, yeah, so then uh, that's that's kind of how I learned so, that. But. So chilling in the nature... Yeah, that's the shots from dirt jumps. Yeah, that's uh, so basically, yeah, the nature part is from my dad. Yeah. So like my both of or like my life is kind of just a combination of theirs. My dad works for, work used to work for nature conservation. Uh, so I grew up on nature reserves mm. and running around catching snakes and bugs and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so that's why I still enjoy shooting that type of thing. Yeah. But yeah, like being in the, it, like at trails, I've got action, which is one of my main passions, and mm. then being out like in a more natural place. So I'm shooting things that look pretty. I mean, you've got like nice grass and flowers and stuff yeah. growing around. So it's really nice stuff to work with and then the guys are riding super ma amazing stuff because i think it's like uh when was it like when le Condigui took that um that one job at helderberg like yeah. they built that like super and i think he did the superman or something over yeah. it so it's not only the the flash hits the the launch yeah it hits him but then you also have the sunset yeah in the background and, and with yeah with those face jumps it's completely different as well okay because like a normal dirt jump i can use two lights and light up the jump and the ride at the same time quite yeah. easily because i mean all the distances are relatively close whether with like a 90 foot jump i mean i can't light the lip and the landing with one light i mean yeah. by the time the light hits the lip and the, the landing is like now another freaking 90 foot away it's the, the light's dead by then so with fair stuff i actually have one light to light the lip one light to light the landing and then another light pointed at the rider and how does is there a cable connecting to all of uh, them somewhere i've got i've got uh, triggers it just slides in where your flash goes on top of the camera and the hot shoe yeah. you just slide a trigger in it's like a box with a little aerial i've got the old uh, pocket wizard plus two like you get tons of new different ones and stuff these days so there's an like, aerial connecting to an aerial and yeah then, then there's another one exactly the same thing is hanging under my flash i plug my flash into that and so as each, you press your button yeah then it sends the signal that would go to the flash on top of your camera goes to that radio uh, transceiver and then it goes to all your flashes and i then, wonder if the riders uh, find that difficult uh, sometimes I have had people mention stuff to me, like asking if I can maybe place a light in a different place. Um, because like, 
obviously with racing and stuff you don't place it right next to the track because if mm. it's pointing straight at the guy then that's exactly where he's focusing so it's not really the nicest thing to do yeah but a lot of the lighting is actually much nicer from the side mm. so if you put it completely from the side then they just see the actual flash they don't have the flash going off in their eyes so yeah. then, then it's normally all right um i'm just trying to think there was somebody that asked me to move a light the other day but it was just because the light was kind of almost underneath the landing and the way he was spinning, that's where, exactly ah, where okay. he was looking. So the trick he was so, doing. Yeah, was that was the problem. So if you're just doing a whip, whatever. Yeah, so then like he came to me and he was just like, oh, could, yeah, he was like, oh, can you move it? And I was like, oh, no problem. I'll because it's weird it. as a rider. Uh, I can't really talk as a rider. Like, I yeah. just scratch the surface. Yeah. But like you get into just doing a jump and it's like sick. Yeah. And then you get bigger, bigger, bigger. And then you get good enough to follow your friend in. Yeah. But that's super difficult, just following at two meters. Yeah. And then if he starts doing certain things, like it catches your, your peripherals, if he whoops. Yeah, then you can't see the landing. Or and it just see, it, yeah. It, it yeah. fucks you up. <laughs> and then the one day at my trail at the, on the farm, I put like a music playing, like when you come over the one jump. Mm. And just the music alone, like threw me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking like these guys... It's the crowds are going crazy in the down. It's like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like they, not only are they good at what they do, but they like they can do it with distractions and everything. Yeah, no, it's. But like uh, to me, a lot of the time, if you look in their eyes, like before they drop in and stuff, they're not there. Okay. They don't hear anything. I can okay. almost guarantee you, if you speak to most of them, they'll be like, I, d I don't even hear the crowds when I'm jumping over. Okay. Like they'll be looking at them and seeing the guys and like see everybody going crazy, but they'll be so focused on what they're doing that they like. It's like almost like pinpoint freaking focus. It's not because um, I, I'm lucky with the um, again with scratching the surface on jumping, cycling, mountain biking. I can appreciate a little bit of what these guys are doing. Yeah. Like I can't completely comprehend it, but I know from what I'm doing how difficult that was. Yeah, and how how that scared you shitless. Yeah. Like, they doing <laughs> <laughs> dude and just the, the craziest thing for me is like because i don't ride at all i mean i ride it like a, a tiny little bit but if my wheels get in the air i'm probably going to hospital so uh, <laughs> so I, I stay away my fruit boots are fun enough for me but uh dude, like hearing them speak because like normal dirt jumps you're going what like maybe 20 30 k's an hour mm. you're not going that quick you're like no. you're just dropping into bowls and popping out yeah but for the first stuff you're coming into a lip at like 80 k's an hour and like when I hear them talking about like how their wheel feels, mm. all of a sudden you're just like, holy shit, I never thought of that. Like spin a bicycle wheel, hold it by the axle and try and turn it. Mm. You feel that force, that rotational force. Like yeah. you can't. So to whip a bike going 80 k's an hour and to whip a bike going 20 k's an hour is not at all the same thing. Like yeah. they, they have to fight against it. And like doing bar spins and tail whips and stuff, like you have to fight the bike around. You don't just like throw yeah. it. And, and just like, the air time that you get. Yeah. Like just staying on the ground, jump. Like it's like this. They literally. Yeah, they're it. flying. They're flying. It's like, I don't know how you do it. Like, um, I want to ask you a million questions. Festivals that you've done. Yeah. But what's the potato trails one that the uh, Night Harvest? The, yeah, Night Harvest, yeah. That's a cool one. Yeah, that's super cool. That's like, that's actually was started by some friends of mine, uh, mainly like Justin and Ryan and John T, the guy who owns the place. Give a shout out, like maybe their full name. So people, yeah, yeah. Because oh, those uh, guys, have, I, fuck, I was at Night Harvest a few years ago, yeah. check you with Chris. And I was like, this is crazy. These guys got a trail in their garden, basically. Yeah. And it's good trails yeah. and it's like proper shit. So I think they deserve a lot of credit. No, for sure. Like our, our, our Cape Town trails crew is tiny, mm. but like the guys work like crazy, man. We've got some of the best trails in the world. Like, like international guys come here to Night Harvest. And I mean, we've had like some of the best guys come back for like three, four years in a row just because they just love because the they vibe, they, they love the trails, they love everything. About and you South work Africa. with Monster. Yeah. Are you like an official monster photographer? Or like yeah, yeah. I'm like one of the main photographers for Monster in South Africa. And then like a few of the international events, they fly me so out to. So do we like say fuck Red Bull or we don't know <laughs> 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 nah, whatever. Like anybody putting money into action sports is cool, but like What's Red Bull. What's the difference vibe between just, Monster and Red Bull when it comes to these type of things? Like Monster's just more like redneck and and like super easygoing, like just dudes that like to drink beer and drink Monster and like watch like n normally like motorsport and shit. So like 
yeah big trucks freaking yeah cars drifting motorbikes going crazy like all that type of shit the way i see it it's almost like the red bull guys are more like the scientific they're, they're like, like the corporate side of things that's yeah. like the very well dressed but even the, the riders and the like, stuff it's like a very they, much i want to be the best in the world type of thing and a very it's it's changed a tiny bit like like a few years ago if you saw a guy with a red bull helmet you knew he was like like one of the top guys in whatever he was doing yeah whether now they've been a bit more open and they're sponsoring a lot more people but they do have like a very corporate kind of outlook on things like they're very strict with their contracts and stuff and like making riders do certain things and yeah. like even if they don't like doing it it's like they, they kind of push them out of their comfort zone a little bit where the monsters more like they, they give their riders a little bit more freedom like if the mm. riders are a bit crazy they kind of they enjoy that they encourage don't, that yeah they don't try and like suppress the guys sort of and like they get involved with side. a lot of smaller projects yeah which is almost like helping the industry more yeah yeah no they, they like i mean red bull used to be doing that quite a bit they yeah. used to have those like downhill races and stuff um mm. uh, down into camps bay and stuff but um you know lately monster's been taking over and like killing everything they they yeah. you know, they've just been is that like, your phone or mine yeah no that's mine yeah. <laughs> um so what's the full names of the guys from Night Harvest? Uh, the guy that I work with uh, a lot is uh, Ryan Franklin. Okay. He's, uh, he's actually moved to UK and is working for Monster there now. Okay. Uh, so In he's, he's, he's uh, the athlete manager for skate and BMX and stuff. All right. And some of the mountain bikers as well. Uh, so he's super busy all the time. He's like flying all over the world. Like mm. whenever I see his Insta stories and stuff. Like a scout almost. Uh, or the guys no, are already The guys are already on. Like he will be a scout as doing, well. Do like you want to go do this and that? He does, he does add like new people on. Like there's two South African guys that he's added on to Monster. Um, and a few other international guys as well. Um, but yeah, he basically helps the athletes that are already on. Like if they have a project, he'll go there and help them out and make sure that everything runs smoothly and stuff. Um, but he'll also check out for new talent and stuff at yeah. events and things like that. So he's he's got his eyes on all and sorts of stuff. And the other two guys? Uh, uh, then it's Justin Novella. He's like the main guy of the trails crew. Yeah, it's his uh, property or his parents? Uh, no, that's, uh, he just is one of the builders. Okay. Um, he works at uh, Hellsend as well, the the bike park on Simonsberg. Okay. Um, so he's, nice bike park. Yeah, super good, man. Is it? Like, yeah, he's built some really sick stuff. So what there. type of, if you talk bike park, like what, what does that mean? Uh, like there's, downhill there's, or there's single dirt jumps, e everything. everything. There's downhill, there's like a super sick flow trail, which if you know the Fink line in mm. Chatel, it's almost exactly the same as that. There's like rollers and berms and stuff. So if you're a little kid and you're not that good, yeah. you can ride slowly and just do all the rollers. But if you're fast, you can triple stuff. So yeah. there's like big gaps. You can like, there's berm to berm hucks. So. And the other guy with the, uh, John T or John T Human, it's uh, it's his place. His parents own the the plot, kind of just next door, and yeah. that uh, it's in uh, in an area where like a lot of people have horse paddocks and stuff like that. So that was basically their horse paddock. Yeah. And uh, I've spoken the shots to, that you get off table, yeah, dude. Like we're so lucky here as well. Like not only do we have super good trails and super good trail mm. builders, like where we have our trails are, are in the most. The I mean, like in the of middle this. of Hot Bay, it's one of the most expensive areas, mm. and we've got trails with like mountains all around. So no matter where you look, it's, so that, it's beautiful. So. Has night harvest happened this year or not yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's always kind of in the beginning of the year. This year it was a little bit later. Normally it's in like it towards the end of February, March. Uh, but now this year... So it's it tricky with a, the wind, I assume, in that area. Yeah, wind and rain. Like every year we've had like I think issues. I, but I don't think people understand the effect that wind has on jumping. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, especially when you're going a little bit faster because like, like slow jumps, you're staying kind of low. So, yeah. I mean, it's still obviously not the best thing in the world, but like yeah. you can get away with it because this year Night Harvest, like... Dude, it was unpleasant standing there. Like the wind was so strong that like, I don't know how the guys were even riding. And like, yeah. I mean, they still threw down and did crazy stuff. I never experienced that because as a 120 kilogram guy, the wind yeah, 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 it doesn't really. <laughs> but I go about two meters high from the air. So. Yeah, that's where like all the fest guys, I mean, like some of them are quite big dudes as well. But yeah. like when you're riding 80 Ks an hour, your spokes are not spokes. The wind's mm -hmm. not blowing through your wheel. It's spinning so fast that it's it's like having a piece of wood in between. Yeah. So like if they jump, you can see the wind like blowing them around. And you know, um, do they have a name or is it just Night Harvest Potato Trails? Uh, Night Harvest is the event and yeah. Potato Trails is just the, the name of the trails that the and guys And can you ride Potato Trails if you wanted to or uh, is that not open to the public? Uh, it is open to the public but with trails uh, it's just uh, if, if you've never seen trails or never been to trails then you don't understand but like 
all the guys put in work to keep the trails running because dirt obviously yeah. doesn't just stay together all the time. What's Every the phrase? Time, no bold, no ride. Yeah, no dig, no ride. If, yeah. So Listen, yeah, go <laughs> fuck yourself if you've ridden down a trail for the last few years and you've never taken a shovel. Like... That's one of the most fucked up things for me. Yeah, and the, these days it's super bad because like there's not many kids coming in because it's like you need to work for what yeah. you're going to be using. And, like, and there's a lot of cans driving these days. Yeah, exactly. The guys don't so. play golf anymore, so now they come with their bikes. I don't know, man. It's just a respect for those guys. Uh, yeah, I went to that event and I was like, this is fucking crazy. I'm, I'm so open to the public, like. 0.1% of the public can do Could actually trails. jump them, yeah. But like, th that's the thing is like, a lot of people get the wrong impression of trail builders. They think that they're like assholes that don't want people to ride their trails. But yeah. it's, if you're an asshole, then you don't get to ride the trails. It's you got to look at yourself before you look at them. Like, mm -hmm. if you come to the trails and you bring a crate of beers and you bring a spade and you don't walk up there with your bike and your helmet on and your pads on already expecting yeah. that you're just going to ride something that they've been spending the last 10 years building yeah like look at yourself maybe like mm. you, you don't don't look at the dude and think that his angry reaction towards you yeah. is his fault it's it's the way yeah. you approach just introduce it. yourself say hi how are you doing how can yeah. i get involved like you know how many people told me because i have my private jump line yeah. on the farm yeah which is closed. And there's one guy called fucking Matt Lombardi that I nearly killed one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking right. read it. Yeah, yeah. And I took know, a photo a... and posted it. And uh, I tried to talk to him about it. And it was just like, uh, whatever, dude. I didn't see the signs. I'm like, there's six painted signs yeah, yeah, on the yeah, trail. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of people wanted to ride it because it's quite cool. And I, I met so many people. I'm like, dude, come help me out a couple of sessions. Yeah. And then you can then come ride problem, with me. Yeah. I think I told 10 to 20 people that and they never showed up. And after a while, I was like, listen, take my number. Contact me. And they just never do it. And I'm yeah. like, I love people riding with me. I want to make friends. I want to share what I do. Plus, I, the amount of people that's ridden that thing, I can't do it. Yeah. Like, I built it for Chris and Andre. Yeah. Because I'm like, if I don't build this big enough, they not want to come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you I built like, it yeah. on a level where I want to progress. So I want people to ride it. Just come help me out. Like. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, man, people people don't. <laughs> they'll see you post the photo of you riding it and then they'll give you a call and be like, oh, where's that? It looks so sick. I want to come and ride it. And you're like, yeah, but the freaking like six months before when I was building and I was telling you about it, nothing and happened. That's one of my, that's what I miss the most from cycling yeah. is building trails. I, that was my favorite thing. Uh, I did it about five days a week. Yeah four hours a day and um and then i get quiz in i'll be like dude do you think these angles are right you know maybe modify yeah then i'll be like can you ride it so i can check it and then i modify and yeah, then, then you can see it i don't know see it working and that's what i miss so much um so night harvest is one festival yeah can we talk about dark fest because that's just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the craziest. That's 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 pretty much like yeah, exactly what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, dog fest is that the ultimate gig for yeah, you? Yeah, it's incredibly difficult to shoot, and it's like it can be frustrating because the jumps are so big. Like literally, if the wind is moving a leaf like this, the guys don't ride. So. There, there are a lot of sessions where you're sitting there for like a month watching them build and stuff and then like there's a week where all the best riders in the world are there so you you like on edge and like super keen to get going and like the pressure's like on obviously because you've mm -hmm. only got like a couple jumps because it takes quite a long time for them to get right to the top of the course and come all the way down and mm -hmm. as a photographer you're shooting one jump you're not following them all the way down most of the time and if you're on the third jump yeah and they pull out on the first one exactly you're sitting there and you don't even get a trick of that guy for like half an hour maybe is it boring it, it, so has, it has its moments where you like it, I wouldn't say boring at all it has its moments where you like sitting around and doing absolutely nothing for hours and but does anyone come by you every now and again or are you standing at a weird place between the jumps where nobody wants to come stand most of the time no the riders won't come and chill with you because like when they're going they're just going down the trail if mm. they pull out they just ride to the bottom and get the shuttle and go back up again yeah um, but like uh, there might be another photographer or another filmer so there will be somebody you can chat, chat nonsense with but yeah. like yeah, most of the time you're kind of hiding in a bush somewhere like really focused and waiting but the sessions are not that long because the gaps that you have with no wind are like normally mm. really early morning or late evening so you'll wake up like here this this site like the previous site you'd wake up way earlier because the sun would rise way earlier 
uh, where the now we're a little bit in a valley, so it takes a little while for the sun to come up. So we're normally up by like seven, eight. Mm. Um, and then, then the wind is chilled normally for like two or three hours, so mm. we can get like quite a good session in. Sometimes we're lucky and we can go almost to lunchtime, uh, but that's not too common. Uh, and then sometimes in the evening we get a bit of a gap, and that's obviously my favorite time with sunset and, and yeah. the, the lower light and stuff. Um, but yeah, you're normally getting, if you're, if you're really lucky and you get a morning and evening session, you're getting like three, maybe four hours of riding a day and like an hour is maybe four or five runs for each guy. So it's, it's not that much. And what do you do the rest of the day? Uh, like if, if I've <laughs> been fucking drink and smoke pot, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, sometimes, but, uh, now most of the time you've got photos to work on or you've like from a previous shoot or something. So, um, there's what do the riders do in between? The riders chill out. They just they relax. relax. Sometimes they get like a physio in and stuff to massage them because if they've crashed or like anything's yeah. happened. I mean, they, they're getting beaten up a lot of the time, especially when the riding is happening. When the building is happening, then they're either sitting hours, like for hours of the day in the digger, like busy making the jumps and stuff. And then like they'll treat themselves to like a surf day or something where they'll go through to Musenberg and yeah. then go out in Cape Town for the day or something. But uh, yeah, most of the time it's either working or checking. And as soon as the session's done, do they run to you like little school girls? Like, did you get that fucking uh, shot? Did you if, get this? If something crazy went down, then some of them will be like, yeah, 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 show me that, I want to see it. Like, yeah. like even often when they land, like uh, it's for, for the one jump, the step up, you're often with a fish eye because it's really hard to shoot because of the way the trees are and stuff. They get yeah. lost if you shoot like long angles. Yeah. Uh, so most of the photographers are right around the jump and around the landing. So like even then sometimes when they land, if, if I get stoked or something, Something, then I'll run up and go and show them. Dude, or, check this out. Yeah, then I'll be like, oh, you got that one sick. And like, you're still getting stoked, even though you've done this for 20 years. Yeah, man, because like like the jumps these guys are hitting are like the biggest things that exist for my so bike in the world. Just so, so people know, go check out, again, if you have something separate, press pause, <laughs> <laughs> type in dark fest, yeah, and you'll get an idea of what we're talking about here. They're supposed to do it with motorbikes, yeah, and they do it with bicycles. Yeah, Whose okay. idea is it? Sam Reynolds. That That's Sam's project. Like the Fest series is a whole bunch of events run by different riders and each rider has their own spot. So who's who's in charge of who created the Fest uh, series? Do you know? I'm not 100% sure on How all many of them. How many are there in a year, uh, roughly? I think about 10 almost. Okay. But and once in South Africa. Yeah. Sam, Sam is like one of the newer guys. He's kind of like in the middle stage, I would say. Like you get the real OGs like Andreu and Nico. And Just say the full names for people that know. Uh, Andreu Le Condigui, uh Nico Fink. Um, Macken, he's just, uh, he's like Madonna. He's just <laughs> I actually heard is Mads, Mads Haugen or something like that. He's, okay. a, he's like a sweet uh, Norwegian dude. He's fucking crazy. But like, there's a few other guys. I can't even remember who they are, but like a few other guys that are part of like the real OG crew. Mm. And then like the mid guys, I would say is like Sam and them. Uh, and then you get like all the younger guys like uh, Ethan Nell and Adolf Silver and like all yeah all the Ethan young Nell guys. is that a local boy? Uh, no, he's um, he's from the states. He's from Utah. Okay. He's, How the he fuck actually, do you get a Nell in Utah? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. He's a he's a bit bit far from home. Would you yeah. like to do Rampage? Uh, are you allowed to as a monster guy? Yeah, yeah. I could. Like, I mean, I could ask Monster and go and shoot. Like, I mean, I, I don't know if they would pay my flights and everything just to yeah. go and shoot one rider. But like, if I really wanted to make it happen, I could say pay my own flights and then go. Would and, you like, enjoy enjoy that or not really your thing? Like, I, I do. I would love it. But the thing is, like, to me, what I enjoy the most is doing private shoots with riders. So I would rather go with like one or two riders mm. to where Rampage happens or somewhere similar yeah. and go and shoot with them and have time and not, not pressure. Like that like, yeah, because like like I say, for a lot of that stuff, you're sitting around for a long time. You get you sitting at one obstacle. They're doing the whole line and you get one picture and then they're gone and you don't get another chance. And then you've got ah, to go to the next rider. Session. Session. So exactly. I'd rather, I prefer to go with the rider. It's even with local races and stuff. Like you sit on the side of the track for so long, the guys race past you and yeah. you sit there for half an hour while you wait for the shuttle to drive up and then they all come past you again like yeah. half an hour later so you get one shot then you get to move and you get one shot or maybe your shot isn't right and you mm. need to adjust something then you got to wait half an hour just to get your shot so it takes a really long time whether now because i know the riders i can phone a guy up and say like let's go and kill it the conditions are perfect yeah. today like we can go and session that corner and he knows what i want yeah so instead of him racing through as fast as he can he yeah. can make the photo look as good as possible it sounds like uh, marijuana is your best friend in a day like that you just <laughs> fucking sit around all day <laughs> sam reynolds like Top top quality rider. Yeah, like he's, he's one of one of the best in the world. Would you say? Yeah, in what the, he does. Like the the thing is with him is he's good at everything. Yeah, 
like he's good at doing like that speed and style so he's he's fast he's like a good racer he's got super good bike control and yeah. like four he does on, the like, ramp pace yeah, yeah, jumps, yeah. Like. he can he can do everything like he's he's one he's of those from things. england yeah and i assume because he's involved with us he's got a bit of leadership a bit of ambition a yeah, little bit of managerial he's, skills he's pretty much like it's his project dark okay. is like his stop so he has pretty much the whole say on that uh he gets clemens cardella and uh nico to come and help him and they they're the, the masters in the machine so he basically yeah. has the ideas and he they obviously also like suggest stuff yeah. to him and, and, things. and the boulders all hit the jumps yeah. yeah yeah clemens actually for the last three years in a row he's won the dark king which is like basically the mvp so okay. like he's he's the boss he does he builds the jumps like super sick like dude i mean a lot of people think those guys are stupid but you don't hit jumps that size and survive yeah. when you're stupid. Like it's like they're, they're a scientist the geometry dude, in your head. Dude, it's unbelievable. Like, like Nico's brain, he can look at a slope and see how much speed you're going to get for it and build a jump. And that jump is exactly the size that that speed, like that the heel gives you. And it's just like crazy. It, like it, artists, really dude, like artists. But like their brains on another level. And even uh, he, he changed because he does loose fest in Belgium. Yeah. But last year he did, he moved it to another spot that he has uh, in Royal Hills and yeah. he called it, calls it Royal Fest. Okay. But he built a mountain bike line, but he also built a moto line because there's a whole, it's actually like a moto park. Yeah. Um, Dude, the guy that owns the place, he told me that like it rained for six or seven days solid. The next day he went to the motor park, not a puddle anywhere, bro. The whole place is dry. Nico's br- he like he, yeah. he doesn't need a spirit level for anything. He's just sitting in the digger, the drainage, yeah. everything's at the right angle. Let's see if you wanna, off I'm like, just gonna interrupt it there. If you wanna be a good trail builder, understand <laughs> drainage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like plumbing. Dude, dude, I drive around and I see like like municipal built stuff and yeah. I'm like my friends know how to do this better mm-hmm. for their dirt jumps like there's a road and like the stuff is not like a dirt road and the stuff's not built right so I haven't touched my jump line in about a year and a half two years now and one of my little proud things is that anybody can now just go hit it yeah. like there's no erosion yeah, the you drainage keep, yeah, is absolutely sure. perfect like if you build everything right, it's I'm quite lucky also with Quiz, that is yeah. an actual irrigation expert. Uh, yeah, 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 that definitely helps. <laughs> um, is dog face in South Africa? Is that how does the Nisna versus the Stellenbosch thing work? Because uh, I know like it, it just it started in uh, in just outside Sedgefield at that trail park. Yeah. Um, and then the first year we went there, it was actually uh, it was called um, Pure Darkness yeah they'd done one basically it was a tour or like it was like a little road trip with a whole bunch of guys that were friends like matt mcduff uh, sam reynolds uh and then danny pace is that mcduff guy crazy <laughs> yeah he's he's a character dude. he's he's one of the raddest guys you'll ever meet but yeah he's he's, he's a little bit he's, uh, he's, he's out there he's just like he's just like he's wide open all the time like he's, his go. stoke his stoke level is like bah, 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 the whole, you know like he's, he's just bouncing <laughs> off the limit of it no he's he's uh, he's a character to do you ever get man. starstruck hanging out with some of these guys are you so used to it by now because uh, when i now, saw le Condigi at night harvest i was just like no way yeah i mean no like the, the first few times i saw them i was just i mean i'm still like every now and again i'm kind of chilling there and i'm like Dude, I just got a message on Instagram, like a voice note from Andre Lukondagi. If you told me this like five years ago, I'd be like, wait, are you joking, bro? Like, uh, there's not a chance that dude even knows who the fuck I am. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But like, so I do sometimes still have moments where I'm like, like five years or like a few years ago, like I would not even really like yeah. dream and of where I am And the gratitude each year. And it's exactly like, I realized that all the work I've done has gotten me to exactly pretty much where I've wanted to be. How many years and of work is it before you reach that level for you? I mean, I've been doing it for twelve years now. And Professionally, yeah. But well, no, I like I've started like started twelve years ago. Uh, so like, uh, I mean, I started making money off of it pretty early on. But like, I wouldn't really call myself professional back then. Um, maybe for the last like eight years, eight nine years, I've been and, shooting like. And solidly. your lucky break was that put you on the map. I don't even. Or know, was this a body of it's, work? It's that it's like a slow progress. I kind of guess like. Obviously, with Monster, things started to like rocket a little bit because then like they have contact with athletes and like cool projects happening and flying mm. me all over the place, and that mm. that was obviously like exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so starting to work for Monster was pretty much, but like that was also like a slow progress working for a lot of local events and stuff like that, and letting them know that yeah. I was like. But how I was does Monster find out 
lose Eric Palmer? Uh, that was actually a really lucky one. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dark fest. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this is the second time this has happened. Let's go. <laughs> so, uh, if any international person is listening... <laughs> welcome to South Africa. Welcome to South Africa, where our power companies don't really work. Uh, or we have one, and that power company doesn't really work. And they all get the most massive raises. So, we get uh, periodic a blackouts, <laughs> which is unscheduled, and yeah. we've just had one. And sometimes we're lucky that this is a 5 to 15 minute thing. Yeah. And sometimes it's a two hour thing, and... Sometimes it happens once every month. Sometimes it happens yeah, four times a day. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. And hell. my favorite thing is people get upset that the sh- that they don't stick to the schedule. And I'm like, bro, they can't supply you power. How do you think they're gonna make a schedule that works? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you have faith in people that are completely useless. <laughs> You're gonna fucking you let's, have a bad time. Let's be professional about how unprofessional we are. Yeah, like, it's like let's make a freaking. It's like, dude, you can't supply power to a company. How so, are you gonna make yeah. a schedule? <laughs> so, so we have two options. We can. Uh, chill out a bit and see uh, what happens or my battery on the computer will probably give us half an hour battery over there will probably go at least another hour so we can continue in the dark <laughs> uh, probably if we open the uh, the curtain okay, that will be out. something or we can wait it out i don't know what you want to do man i'm easy i'm chilled either way are we going to throw you Real dog face. Are you going to open that window for us? And we just oh, get a little bit of light in. Let's just be careful of your headset. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll, uh, I think I might take it off. Dude, I can't believe this fucking happened now. <laughs> that sounds fucking beautiful on the microphones. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's perfect. That's I can see that we have a little bit of light. We can we can go for a few more minutes. And then I think we, when, when the batteries start getting close, yeah, then we uh, can. Uh, we throw another twenty minutes. Okay, perfect. I can't remember where we at. Oh, how did Monster find out about you? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that was quite a lucky one. Uh, the very first downhill race I shot. Yeah. Uh, Ryan and Justin were both actually riding. So the guys from Potato Pronounce. Yeah, yeah. So Justin, the the trail builder, and then Ryan, the guy that works for Monster, Ryan Franklin now. Yeah. Um, so basically, after a couple of races, I was shooting them a few times and posting photos and stuff, so they got to know who I was. And where do you post that then? Uh, that was like when Facebook first started, pretty okay. much. Like, I, can't even I mean, I started shooting back uh, June two thousand seven. Okay. So it was like, yeah, you know, back then, like social media pretty much just started, like, or Facebook had yeah. at least. I mean, I can't remember, maybe one or two years or something. Um, but yeah, then I started posting photos and stuff and then went to a couple of the races. Cause I mean, I was living in Yonkersuk and one of the races was like literally just across the valley. So I, yeah. I got my camera and I saw that the guys were riding mm. and the race was the next day. I was busy working that day. So I went down the next day and shot some photos. And, and then uh, randomly Monster saw you on Facebook. And then, no, then because, uh, uh, because Ryan started to get to know me, then him and Justin were building trails in Ryan's backyard in Newlands. So they invited me to go and shoot there one day. Uh, so I basically became friends with them and went to go and shoot with them at all their different trails at Souffle and Potato Trails and whatever. Yeah. So And like back when I started shooting at Potato Trails, it was like, dude, the, the jump line was like this wide. Bro. Like literally you couldn't spin off the jump because the lip was like like an anthill, like a point going yeah. up and like super like carved, cut out like tiny things. But like over the years, they've improved and stuff. And then obviously they were still in school back then. Yeah. So after like a couple of years, then Ryan started working for Monster. And then, uh, then once he kind of moved up in position, then he started hiring me. Yeah. And um, and yeah, basically then like after that, I got to meet like a lot of the international guys from Monster and stuff after yeah. working for them for a couple of years. Uh, and then they started enjoying what I was doing. So then I started getting asked and to go just a bit from a few there. things. Yeah. So. so aspiring photographers. Ah, oh, that wasn't too long. Let's see how long this lasts. <laughs> Mr. Photographer, are we supposed to close the curtain for better lighting or is that uh, fine? We could leave it open. Or it's okay, whatever. If, as long as the exposure on the camera is not gone, it's, it's all right and it looks fine, I think. Okay. Um, aspiring photographers, I'm jumping around a bit. What would yeah. be your advice? Just fucking continue, get out there, post it. Yeah, like don't, don't, don't get like, don't let people get you down. Just keep doing what you're doing. If you enjoy what you're doing, just do it. Like, 
I mean, you're not going to be professional the first day you start. So mm-hmm. if you're going to be like getting down on yourself about not being the best immediately, you can, you're going to like. So th- my, my main thing is just have fun with it. Mm. The, the more you have fun, the more you learn, the, the more enjoyable it is. Like you go on YouTube, you look for some stuff, you go and figure some stuff out if you're struggling or watch things for inspiration and go and practice and well, play. Where do you post the stuff to hopefully someone's going to see you? Uh, I mean, for, for work stuff, to be honest, you actually just need to go out and ask people. Um, <laughs> like companies, approach yeah. companies and stuff, or, or individuals ask like riders and stuff, or find sponsors, sponsors and stuff. Or de- I mean, obviously, it depends on what you want to shoot. If you want to shoot action as well, then go and yeah. find find a rider that doesn't have somebody that he's already shooting with, and and go and see if you can shoot with him a bit. Or, and then you do that for free. You post it, and hopefully somebody sees it. Yeah, you. I mean, you you need to practice like like anything like a musician you you what you need your time of practice so you're going to have to obviously do some stuff for free mm. uh my, my best advice is don't give stuff to companies for free okay if you're working with an athlete let them use the stuff but if companies are, are interested enough to use your stuff they're yeah. interested enough to pay so what do you do put a watermark on so that they can't yeah, use it yeah that's normally the best thing like i kind of stay away from it uh like just because i don't like having text on my pictures and like the thing is most people will crop it out anyway and then your shot looks like shit because they've cropped it like completely off yeah. on, a, on a place where it's not supposed to be cut or whatever. So it's, it is tough. Pretty much whatever you put on the internet, you got to be prepared that somebody is probably going to use it if they yeah. like it. So you, you're pretty much stuck. Like I used to get into like big fights with people and stuff online when they steal my stuff. Now, now I just send them an invoice. Yeah. It's, don't argue. And how many people pay the invoice? Uh, I have quite a bit of free time, so I can be an asshole. <laughs> I have a lot of free. If you steal from me, bro, you got to understand. Like, you don't walk into a shop and take a Coke and drink half of it, and then the yeah. dude catches you, and you go, oh, I'll just put it back. Mm. It doesn't work like that. Mm. If you've got an hour's or, or a few hours, like, worth of my picture being on your account, people have seen it. You can't undo that. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. If you can't educate yourself, and you're a company, and you don't know what the laws are about copyright, and you can't contact me because all of my stuff is wherever my photos are posted that's why I want riders to credit me so that if a company takes my shot mm. they know who the photographer was because yeah. everywhere where my work is my name is with it and I mean you can't tell me you can't contact somebody these days bro like you can message me direct on Instagram you can message me on Facebook my numbers yeah. on most places like like you can give me a lot of excuses but world. at the end of the day like you can just phone me and ask is it cool that I use it most of the time yeah. I'll be like no problem I've already been paid for that shot or cool it's been used for something else he has a super reduced rate or like yeah. what gear do you have can you give me a pair of shoes or can you give me whatever like yeah. I, i'm super easy going but like you so need you're to happy with the me. way i shared it on instagram and just credited yeah you yeah, yeah no, like but yeah, i asked yeah, you originally yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean that. that that we organized and i told you it was fine it's like yeah. it's like because with some of the guys that i shoot with all the time like i just send them photos and i don't tell them all the time like this is how it works yeah. So they kind of get a bit like easy going and they forget because they're having a good time, but yeah. uh, I need to actually earn a living. Yeah. So when they give the stuff to certain people, like I know a lot of the guys do it with really good intentions mm. and because they don't understand the industry, it like puts me in a shit spot sometimes. Uh, because like, say for example, a guy is sponsored by somebody. Oh, let me <laughs> lucky, lucky we kept the window open. <laughs> it's just, just enough to get the batteries Yeah, going. let's see. But um, what's, can I ask you like, what's a... It's probably a difficult question. How much do you get paid for a good shot? It depends what it gets used for. Okay. So can you say like if it's a high paying job, how I mean, much would if, you get for a good photo? Like, like say for example, if I get it in a magazine or if I get it on a, like I got a, a shot in um, a 2020 uh, mountain biking uh, calendar. Mm. And that's, I mean, like a, quite a big ass thing. And it's one of my shots from Dogfest, uh, not this last one, the one before. Uh, and they paid 200 US dollars. Yes, yes. So it's, so it's that, that, but that's like best case scenario. Okay, okay. Most people in South Africa, if you start mentioning prices like that, they will pass out and you definitely won't get a call back. Okay, okay. Like, yeah, most people here, I mean, all over the world, it is like that. But like mm. when you work with companies that are legit, it's easy and they understand what you're worth and they understand what you're doing because yeah. they work with people in the industry all the time. But when you work with somebody who doesn't understand, like 100 Rand is a lot for a photo yeah so it it's it yeah it's really difficult and but that's what i say is like if i'm going to sell pictures to riders from a downhill race 
I know that they are not a sponsor. They yeah. don't have like a huge budget. They don't have, and like, what am I going to do with all those photos sitting on my computer? Yeah. So I give it to them for like super cheap rates and stuff. And I'm like, you can make as many prints well, like on your 50 walls. Bucks. Like, oh yeah. I mean like normally I'll do like a hundred rand each and then like say I'll do like five shots for like 350 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, depends obviously what event and where it is. So social media helps you in the way that these guys want it because they want to post it. Yeah. So now the riders are actually paying you. Yeah. Where there are obviously some riders that I don't charge, like because I, I kind of feel like the relationship that I've built with them over the years, like they've kind of helped me get to where I am. Oh, yeah, so yeah. like I don't mind helping them and getting their social media. Most of the most of the riders I shoot with they have like way more followers than I do, and like you know, like I. I I'd rather have them like having all of that than yeah. me sitting on pictures and sitting it on my hard drive and like it just gathers dust like no, nobody's going to see the stuff. So, local, sorry, I'm going to just, because um, I don't know how much is this going to be like um, local riders that you like doing projects with, either just because they're cool to hang out with and do the project with or they're really cool to shoot. Yeah. Like, do you, uh, top of your head? Like, the, the guy that I've probably shot, the, uh, he's probably actually got the most shots out of any BMX in the world of himself, uh, is Malcolm Peters. Okay. He uh, He's from, or he was from Gordon's Bay. Okay. And so he used to ride at Bel Air, the trails that's just mm -hmm. on the side of the R44 when you is drive that across. that closed down? Uh, no, there's still some kids building there, but like, then... They're not the best builders. They've built like some of the feedback I've had is like that the lips are really kicky. Okay. And because the jumps are quite long, like you can easily get bucked over the bars and stuff. So, like, they, they I mean, the kids ride them actually all right. So, yeah. like, for the style that they're riding, mm. it's perfect. But and if you're a that, new rider hitting it, yeah, you're, you're probably going to And Or if you're used to how they used to be, like, then you get like popped okay. around a bit. So, but it kind of makes sense that the people that are doing the work are building the jumps for themselves. Mm. So if you want to complain about it, we'll build your own jumps, you know, yeah. so you can, you, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's, yeah, they're, they're still going, yeah. but uh, they're slightly different to what they used to be and not as many lines yeah. as, as what used to be going. So was Malcolm Peters? Yeah, he was, he was like for a stage, he was one of the only guys working and riding there. And like that dude is unbelievable to shoot. Like yeah. I pretty much learned like most of my BMX knowledge from shooting him because he can do almost every trick and he does them both ways. And like, <laughs> just needs to go faster than you got a strobe light. <laughs> so uh, how old is he roughly, do you think? Uh, what, he's still he's riding. In, he's in his early 30s now, I think. Like, I think okay. Yeah, he's still riding. Like he, he had a uh, ACL surgery a little while ago, so okay. he was taking it a bit slow for a while. Mm. Uh, but yeah, he's riding again. And he's, is he making money out of riding? Uh, I mean, not like he's making a tiny bit of money from Monster and stuff, but he's not making a little. How like, crazy is that? That like first guy that you mentioned, and he's yeah. not making a living. How no. fucking sad is that? No, he's working in like some IT or something, some web Jesus stuff. Dude, and that's it's crazy. Not man. cool. No. I wish it would be different. No, but like the, the, the horrible thing is that like because overseas they have so many more opportunities for mm. people to get better and like you've got Resi now. I mean, okay, back in the day they didn't really have that either. But like they've always had foam pits and stuff for people to practice in and like good skate parks and things mm. where they're like in South Africa, if you want to ride something, you pretty much build trails. Yeah. And like Cape Town's trail scene is good, but like if you're in Joburg, dude, like trails get shut down left, right, and center. People build stuff and like yeah. get bulldozed like a week later. So so I started at 30, 31, I think. And then I was like, my goal is that in three years, I want to be able to do a backflip. And I my progression was pretty good or decent, but I was like... Yeah, where do you practice that? Like, where do you do that? Like you need a phone pit to like really yeah. be... And I'm like, how many foam pits are there in South Africa? No, there's like, there's been, I think, one or two. And like for the FMX stuff, there's a few, but those are like private things that the guys have built themselves. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> that's completely And different. then um, other riders that you like to give credit to that you either hang out with or that uh, uh, cool to take pictures of? Justin Novella pretty much is like one of the other main guys, like him and all the trails crew, like all the guys that jump. What is a trails crew? Uh, it's, I mean, to be honest, it's pretty much just Justin. Okay. <laughs> but like the trails crew is all the boys that ride and dig and build and stuff. Like, and where do they build? Uh, like on that farm that you said? And then yeah, the Justin is the main guy. Like because the farm is on private property, it's uh, it, the guy that owns it, Sebastian Claassen. He, his son Ike rides as well and he's just been picked up by Monster Army. That's people. Yeah. I yeah. saw, I think, didn't the... Uh, um, I saw a video like four years ago, this light is just hitting it. Yeah, you tiny little kid. Like he, mm. he last year he hit the step up. Yeah. And he's too small to hit it on his own. 
like he's too light. He, like he doesn't ca- he doesn't generate yeah. enough speed going down the hill. So basically, what he had to do was follow Nico in in his slipstream uh, okay. and get like dude like super close behind. And Nico even afterwards like I'm talking, and like he's like yeah dude I say one two three and then I wait like another two seconds because I know he like he clips in because I Ike's a racer so he clips yeah. in like and he hits that stuff clipped in dude so Nico just like he's like okay one two three go. And then go, and then Ike is on his tail, and then like then he makes it. So that guy Lighty is really good, dude. He's I'm like he used to race moto. But did Bennett uh, build some of the trails originally there, or? Uh yeah, the the basically where the line goes through, like there's a small line that Bennett built, uh, that was down the side, but that got completely destroyed okay. by the diggers when they built over it. But like yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. And then we, trails crew or? trails crew is more like building dirt jumps. Okay. So like the sculpted like sharp edge. And where like, also they involved? Deep. Um, so they do potato trails. They do Sutfle, which is in Sutfle Avenue, is just outside Takai. Um, they do Hellsend. Uh, Thomas, one of the filmers and riders, he's got his own little spot uh, mm. just at the entrance of Kirstenbosch, like yeah. kind of just in one of the fields there. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's another crew of guys that used to build the gum trails in Durbanville, mm. um, but that's like yeah, that's a separate crew of guys. And this is all uh, is this, this stuff that you mentioned is that open to the public? If they pay a little fifty rand or something, uh, mm, or not, not, all not, of it? not 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 money spared. Okay, so you can all, get all the, the, that's that's there's even a lot of riders that don't understand how that works, and because a lot of times they'll be like, oh, I'll give you a hundred rand and I can ride there, and it's like, but all the guys that build there have jobs; they don't mm. have time. Mm. So when they go and build, mm. it's time away from their girlfriend, time away from yeah. whatever you know. Like anybody's their time yeah. is precious. So these days everybody's getting older. So any time you spend on the trails, you want to be riding the trails. Yeah. So if if you're gonna give anything to trails, so go on to maybe like Instagram and send a DM. Can I yeah, maybe ask, come ask help them, out? Yeah, ask them when ride. they're gonna build again. And it's normally after rains. And don't fucking change lips and landings and booms. Yeah, you go and you build permission. with them. Yeah, you're building at their spot. You're building the way they want. If you want to build the way you want, just start your own spot. Yeah. Then, then it's nice because then if you go to other trails, people are welcome, like welcome you without building. Yeah. Because they know that if they go to your trails and they're sick trails, then you can ride for free. So is that well. trails crew? Yeah. And that's different from trails troops. Yeah. Yeah, Do trail, trail troops. Uh, trail troops is uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, or he, Sean or Jean. Sure, I, yeah, I was about to say I never know how to pronounce pronounce his name. I've heard that it's Sean, but it's spelled Sean. So, anyways, but uh, but he does more like single track. Oh, we're back. <laughs> yeah, he does more like cross country kind of trails and okay. like like yeah, chill stuff like. And do you know the politics within the cycling industry? <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. Is that it? an international thing or is that like a, a, a Western province type of thing? Because it, I know nah, it's fucking it's, huge in Stellenbosch, but do you have it also overseas? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, is that just part of the industry? There's always uptight people and people that don't understand how things work and people that are very entitled and they want to go and put their opinion out there. And it's, and, but they're not. Don't so really the cycling know industry, there's just generally quite a lot of politics. Humans. Humans everywhere. Every scene I've ever been part of, there's always politics. Humans bring politics into everything. But so. I feel like the cycling industry, there's yeah. a bit more. Yeah, but it's or maybe in Stellenbosch. It's, it's, Stellenbosch is because it's a huge cycling area. I yeah. mean, like a lot of riders, if you ask them where their favorite place in even the whole Western Cape or even the whole of South Africa is to ride, like a lot of them will say in Stellenbosch. Yeah. Because you've got Yonkazuk, you've got Simons Bath, you've got all the farms now yeah, opening up trails. So they all join together so you can yeah. go riding for hours. And a lot of the trails are actually really sick. So... So yeah, I mean it's, yeah. it is a, it is a big place, but the problem is you have the clash of the two different attitudes that doesn't happen a lot in different sports. Like, like say, I, I don't even know, but like you, you have the cross country guys, mm. which are normally quite like into their fitness and a little bit sometimes precious, um, and then you have the free riders, <laughs> which I mean, dude, I've seen like one of my friends makes jokes and like says, "Ooh, little pussy" or whatever, like about uh, cross country. Dude, it's, it's a joke, dude. Like yeah. he's joking. He's not being. He's not going like, oh, that guy's a little bitch. Like, yeah. He, he, it's you can see it's tongue in cheek. But dudes message him left, right, and center, and you're just like, bro, he, it's he's laughing. He's making a joke. Like yeah. he doesn't really think. It's that, almost like, like the bodyboarders and the surfers don't like each other. You're both heaving waves. Yeah. Like, but it's like at least those two kind of people normally have a similar mentality. So yeah. if you don't see them with the boards and you see them on the side, they could probably be friends. Mm. But in the water, because it's different, like whether like a cross-country dude and a free rider is never going to be friends. 
with a bike or without a bike like yeah. the one dude's a loose dude who likes drinking beer and going crazy and the other dude wants to sit at home yeah. and drive very carefully and you but know, some of those. like if you now go cross country on the international level yeah like some of those guys are better than the free riders locally yeah like, yeah 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 the, what they do it's just like that but those cross country guys i don't like to classify as the local cross country guy the local stellenbosch cross country guys or, yeah 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 the average like your average joe that's like just when i grew up around, the skateboarder fine. rollerblader bmx was semi dropout metalhead rocker slightly potty dish yeah it was a super mellow chill yeah, the more person. relaxed yeah. and then when i got into the cycling industry I was like, there's a lot of like uptight weird people. And it's yeah. like, I w- like one of the things that blew my mind, I, I ride with everyone. I just yeah. like hanging out. And I like doing sometimes the distance things because it's good for fitness. Yeah. So when you do do your jumps. Like, yeah, you need the strength. I mean, yeah, most of the riders. But are. I like, and I know a lot of people. So I drive, ride with two guys. Yeah. We stop, we meet someone, we have a quick chat. And as we ride away, the guy, like the other two, like, oh, like, did you see the bicycle you was on? I was like, no. Ah, oh, did you see the like, the like gear on the? I was like, no. Like I was looking at his eyes, having a chat with yeah, him. Like, yeah, yeah. It wasn't you were really judging, yeah. And like people talk about the fucking socks that some people are wearing, and I'm like, no, dude. That's the, the cycling industry. That's where it's good if you don't have a lot of money because you can have a second hand yeah. bike coming very soon because there's all those expensive new bikes that get sold second hand like a year later or not even. But yeah, it's it's really sad. I know there's a lot of trail building companies in this area. Yeah, and it's weird how they they don't live in harmony. Yeah, no. And you know what's even weirder for me is how the um, cycling shops are not living in harmony or not supporting the trail companies because uh, what I felt like I helped out the industry a little bit with building trails for free like 500 hours a year because there are trails developing cycling shops are making more money because there's more trails to hit if you build it more difficult more uh, expensive bikes yeah but they, I think they can support some of the trail builders a bit better. Like it's a, it, it, like if there was more harmony, like yeah, I that's that, that's where I like um, with with Hellsend is pretty much partnered with BMT. Okay. So like they're really close together. So I mean, some of the guys that work at BMT live on Hellsend and stuff. Yeah. So it's like that at least is very nice. But I know between the different trail builders and stuff and everything, there are even the cycling uh, shops. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody has their own, like, but yeah, I, I mean, like. But that's normal in a lot of industries, but it's just sad because for me, it's like uh, cycling is a, uh, it's freedom. It's uh, getting away from all the bullshit in life. It's yeah, about yeah. hanging out, just having a good time. And yeah, some, t- some people have too much bullshit and they bring their bag with them on the ride. You know, <laughs> I'm not the easiest guy in the world, I know, but I don't know. That's yeah, but uh, when you're on your bike, that's your fun time. That's your time where you just relax and chill out. And if somebody's having fun and doing whatever, it's cool. Like, even if you don't like yeah. it that much, like. Just let them enjoy themselves and get their steam off as well. So do you work with any other trail companies or is this like trail crew is the main people that you're involved with? Uh, I mean, locally, there's not really many others that do the type of stuff that I like to shoot. Because yeah. like, I mean, there are other trail builders that build like downhill trails and stuff like that. But like, I mean, I enjoy shooting downhill, but I'm way prefer Sorry, man. The, I wanted to ask you earlier, like street shooting. Like yeah. you sent me that one picture where the BMX was going down the staircase. Yeah. Like, do you miss that? Because rollerblading is a lot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More the you street. You miss a little bit of the street I, stuff. I do, and it's uh, that. That's we don't have a lot of guys that ride that kind of stuff here. That guy's actually, um, where was he from? It's Fernando. Um, but yeah, he's a he's a European guy. I can't even remember where he's from anymore. But uh, he's super good at streets, and he came to Durban. That shot was in Durban, okay. and uh, he came for I think it was about a week. And we went around shooting with him and just like mm. getting pics for an interview and that type of stuff was super sick and like i don't get to do that very often because there's not many south african yeah. guys that ride like that i the, miss the uh, seeing skateboarders in the streets yeah man. like checking out the staircases like the if, rails. If, you, if you go in cape town there's quite strong crews of skateboarders okay. and stuff um but the bmx side of things there's only one dude that uh, i mean okay there are more guys but like there's one dude that's on like an international level that's riding locally his uh, name uh murray lobsher 
good yeah super good man like if yeah if you watch his stuff he's incredible he's like level. and he's like his consistency just his mentality about riding like yeah. when you speak to him and you see the way he thinks about tricks like he's super analytical like he yeah. he like I enjoy that as well because like just being a photographer I don't do the trick so I like yeah. to understand how difficult the trick mm. is so like while I'm chatting with a guy if his bike is lying there I'll climb on the bike and I'll stand there and like start just doing the movements for the tricks just yeah. so that I can kind of feel and understand mm. the differences and things and sometimes you're like holy shit bro. like I knew that was tight but like I can almost not even get the bar past my leg and he's doing that in the air and coming back like so I, I really enjoy understanding how difficult it is for the guys because I mean skating myself there were certain and tricks that were more difficult than others yeah but if you didn't skate you wouldn't ever know that so mm. I, I enjoy it kind of just working out and, and, and also the creativity so. if they do a line yeah because I, like I, it's beautiful like you do a few obstacles and stuff that's not meant to be written you not meant a, to be skated you like, have a you, list of 40 tricks per obstacle and you put it together at this this speed this height this yeah. exit this entry this move and i'm like the creativity of some of the people and then like you say the consistency like you hit it every time yeah. and then there's the people that just do session obstacles and like some of the shit that they do is just like dude yeah because i mean like that, that that's the raddest thing about biking is there's so many different like different avenues you can go down mm. like you can be like Nikolai Rogatkin and do like the most spins and most rotations have you and taken like, a picture of him yeah, in yeah. person yeah yeah he's a rad dude man he's really chill like, so what's some of the most famous people you've taken pictures of um, this Nikolai guy is yeah Nikolai he's like I mean he's he's been world champ for like FMB for a couple of, I, mean, I think like two or three years maybe more mm. yeah I mean I don't keep up with that kind of side of things I just watch the comps and like the results i don't normally worry about too yeah. much i just watch the but is it but difficult like, getting the picture of him because he does so many spins at which point do you take the picture yeah it's difficult because like when i shoot with a lot of those guys like it's the first time i've ever shot that trick like mm. so maybe it's the first time i've ever shot a cash roll is like with pat casey or with like nikolai or someone like yeah. that and then next thing i've got somebody doing like a, like a cork seven no hander and i'm yeah. like i've never shot one before i, I kind of i mean i've seen it and on you can't videos just do that no you have to. like you can do that but to me that uh, like that's not a real know. photographer that's, uh, yeah, that when i hear that like I've, I, there's been some photographers that i like really look up to them and i look at their work and i'm like yo this dude's producing some amazing stuff and i stand next to them and i just hear <laughs> and i'm just like bro what the? like you're going home to like twenty thousand photos where yeah. you need one bro mm. like click maybe twice or three times when the car comes past or yeah. like for moto it's a bit different like some sometimes a corner will be like like a square kind of almost like it's obviously round but like your your strong points in the corner will be like in your entry so you ride in you hit the corner hard you ride out you hit the corner hard at the end and you ride yeah. out then five minutes later because there's 20 guys going around the track every time like the corner is now in the middle mm. so they come through and they hit it once and then they're out again yeah so if they're hitting the corner twice you've got two moments if they're hitting the corner once you've got one moment so then i'll click more than once if there's a moment that's happening again but like if a car's just driving past yeah. me like there's the sick moment there for one point like you and know? would you ever tell the guys listen i i i like what you're doing but maybe come a meter closer from the lip or there because I, I, then i can capture you better do you yeah have? yeah yeah i have asked a few times like um because i like kind of playing tetris with the background if there's trees and stuff if there's yeah. a gap i try and get the ride in the gap so that they separate nicely um so then sometimes if i can't like if there's a wall there i obviously can't move more so then i'll ask the guy like i'll oh, just try and jump like as much as you can on the right of the lip or something so yeah. that you in the gap and not uh, not on the other side but uh yeah, I mean, most of the riders I shoot with, they're like super amped to do whatever I ask them to yeah, do. Yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, when it gets to jobs and like working with the big guys, then it's a bit yeah. more difficult. But like, because then they just ride and I shoot mm -hmm. what they do. Like, I don't really ask too much from them. But like, and other, other famous riders that you've shot? Uh, is a Sam, big one. Sam Reynolds, uh, Andre Le Condigui, uh Graham Agassiz, Jordi Lunn. I mean, all, most of the Dogfest crew, Nico Fink, Clements like and they're a bunch yeah. of cool guys no ego yeah, really arrogance. sick like, like once like, you get to that level like dude, the, you it, don't need to prove yourself that's one of my favorite things about like the fest series is because it's all like each person has their stop so sam has his stop is dark fest in south africa yeah he invites the riders he wants there yeah so if you're a dickhead 
yeah you don't get an invite mm. if you're full of ego and you're like this dude that's going to be like well i mean you're walking around against the world's best so wh- whose muscles are you rolling against yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> you, 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 yeah you're pulling out your big dick slinging contest with the anaconda bro you're gonna lose like yeah, so, yeah, yeah you know like just put it away and be a nice dude and then you'll get to come and, and ride all so. super chill yeah really nice and if guys, you're a fan like, can you just walk up to the people and say hi can i take at a the picture event, with you yeah. like, at the event cool for dude, that. like like I watch a lot of the riders because like that's a big thing to me. Like I've met a lot of people that I look up to, and when I meet them, they're assholes. And I'm like, I, I don't even watch their sections anymore. I don't. Mm. I can't. Like I'm like, dude, this dude's a dickhead. But like, bro, you meet Nico Fink. He's the nicest guy. Literally the nicest guy you will ever meet. And yeah. everybody says that, bro. Yeah. Like he thinks about you before he thinks about himself. Like mm. if somebody crashes, he will miss his whole event for you, bro. Okay. Like he's un. Like you don't meet people like that. Andrea as well. Like. He's also fucking a bit mad and like loose and crazy dude. But like when he sees a little kid that's like, (laughs) he's got the time. He stops, bro. In the middle of the session, he'll stop and like sign stuff and chat to the guy. And like, no, man, they're all like super, super nice guys. I think the first night of this I did, there was this guy. He looked a little bit uh, Mexican slash Spanish or something. And he always had a smile for the whole line. And he Kevin Kevin Peraza. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, that, it's just you a smile all the yeah, time. Yeah, right? but like that's the thing is like you just I mean you just say like you've got a smile the whole time and it's like that's KP like Kevin. And Perazzo. is it still he's, like that? Years later, he's, he's still. The, he's he's the one of the best dudes to watch on a BMX. Like, and is he that nice off the lines yeah, as well? Yeah, super chill dude, man. Like him and Pat Casey. Like Pat's really quiet and like quite reserved and like I'm a bit like that as well. So like when we're together, we kind of just stand next to each other and we like how's it going? Kind of cool. Yeah. But like yeah, we both fucking love what we do. Like and. Dude, watching those guys ride is like they're both of them so smooth like s- not not the same style but like both that smooth like buttery like effortless kind of style like yeah. they do completely different tricks and like like very different style in the air in their tricks but like dude both such nice guys mm. and like at, at the top of the game so and um, like, i know you told me like um and we spoke about that few years ago but le Condigui is a superman like the yeah, yeah, stretch yeah, that yeah, he gets yeah, yeah. on that like <laughs> Dude, ballet like, style beauty yeah i mean like do, like i've watched quite a few mountain bike videos in the last 12 years since i started shooting it and like watching that guy's sections i was always just like bro this guy's a photographer's dream like yeah. like when he does super seat grabs like his body is arched that his feet are above his head and he, like you don't see people doing them like but he's that. a lot smaller than what i thought he would yeah. be yeah yeah he's, he's like a miniature short, yeah he's a short i, I have one a, picture of him at night harvest where i did this and i'm like i had to like bend yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's, he's a solid little dude no he's, he's other like, riders that do cool tricks What's some of the coolest tricks? Did you do that double backflip that the one guy tried? Uh, or did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adolf, he's... Did he land it? Dude, he's a special kid, yeah. And the funny thing is, I think he didn't ever jump that jump straight. Not because once. Because the, the one time he tried, he like followed a guy in, but then he followed him too closely. And when he came up the lip, he pulled off to yeah. the side. So, uh, so then I was obviously standing that was the one time when i'm standing like right at the top on the corner of the landing yeah and like if you check his gopro shot from it like he ejects and comes to the side and you just see me underneath like oh oh shit he's about to land on me so i like took one step to the side and then he came and landed like a meter away from me i kind of saw like he was going to miss me so Mm. i was uh, good chill uh, it is pretty scary, but like I always tell people, it's like if somebody throws a tennis ball at you from there, yeah. like you can see which direction it's going. So yeah. you don't have to run like 20 meters when the thing's just going to miss you by like two meters. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so he did that, hipped the thing. I mean, for like one of the biggest jumps ever to jump it sideways is ridiculous. Lands down, almost crashes into the monster truck, which was at the bottom, like slides out sideways. So that's one of the ways he landed it. When he jumped it, I think he often got like bucked over the bars or mm. got blown off the bike or something. And then the double backflip he landed. But like I was standing behind the jump and for that I shot a sequence because I knew it was coming. Uh, so I heard him and saw him doing the flips and I was like, the rotation looked perfect. But when he landed, like he disappeared obviously behind the landing mm. and I just heard, bah! And I was like, oh shit, he's like, his, so one of his tires has exploded and he's like flipped down over yeah. the bike and shit. So anyway, so next thing I hear like celebration and stuff and I'm like, what the fuck? He's like blown his bike up and landed it. 
and like so yeah so that's like the two things and you as a photographer time. then share the joy like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah no it's like circus everyone fucking runs so. dude it's like because like i mean when you get to spend time with those dudes you obviously become friends with them and stuff mm. and you're chatting with them around the table at supper and like during the day and whatever so like you obviously become friends with a dude and if yeah. you see your friend going for something that could potentially either put him in hospital or he's the biggest hero of the world like yeah do you get he, nervous when, when they do some of those things yeah for sure isn't like especially like often when i know the rider's confident then yeah. i don't worry too much but when the rider's a little nervous then i get really nervous because like that dude knows where his skill level is and if yeah. he's scared that like like doubt is one of the worst things in action sports yeah if you think something's going to go wrong you probably shouldn't do it yeah. You need to be confident. You need to know, like, and uh, it makes you do it properly. Yeah. Whether if you're scared, you might be like, oh, I'm going to do this to be safe. And that's the mm. stupidest thing to do because then you go Peer short. Peer pressure, or, I think, is a big fuck up. Like, everyone's there, so you want to represent. Yeah. yeah that you, does. you, one of the reasons I got my last concussion. <laughs> because you is fucking <laughs> Kippy Korn, who's like a useless rider. And the famous Eric Palmer is taking pictures of us. And there was that jump that I had a crash. I'm still yeah. bummed out that you didn't get the crash. Like, that would have been <laughs> awesome. Like, you would have been able to post that. Like, <laughs> look at this dumb motherfucker. Like, <laughs> fail of the day. And uh, the reason I crashed, I did that jump before. Yeah. And I fucking nailed it. Like, slick. Yeah, you're super comfy. And I always get nervous before I go ride with Kurs and Andre. And I just got to say, like, if it wasn't for Kurs and Andre, especially Kurs, yeah. I would have never ridden the stuff that I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's an amazing guy, like you know. Yeah. And um, every night before I go to that trail, I get nervous because I know that jump's coming up. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, yeah, like yeah, on the yeah, limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, so that night, uh, and then Eric, uh, Chris tuned me, okay, Eric's coming tomorrow. So I was like, sweet, you know, going to get a, maybe a picture. Yeah. And um, and then you feel like a retard because you know you don't look cool on the picture. There's no yeah, whip, yeah, yeah. you know, if you lie in the berm, like you're not really lying into it. And then they were just hitting that, hitting that. And every time I came into that berm and my running, I was like, I don't feel good. Yeah, like, the yeah, whole yeah. day, I was just like, something doesn't feel right. And I'm like... Eric Palmer's never gonna be here again. <laughs> you know, like, and I was like, I gotta hit it, I gotta hit it. And then I fucking hit it. And then mid air, I don't yeah. even, like now, I don't remember five seconds, 10 seconds before the jump. Yeah. And I don't know five, 10 seconds after, after the jump. Yeah. And that was my last big crash. Like I said, yeah. I was slurring my words for a week. Yeah, no, that's like at good. seven o'clock at night, I couldn't talk to anyone because my brain just shut down. And that was the last of, I think, 20, 25 concussions. No, and I've think. had a few crashes where I was like, you're thinking with your cock? <laughs> like, it's a little bit of ego, pride. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't warm up, stupidity, something like that. And I'm like, do do those guys do that as well? Or are they like just professional? No, I mean, like the funniest thing is they'll probably actually normally fall harder on small stuff mm. because they're more relaxed. On the big stuff, they're focused. Okay. Like when, when they ride fast stuff, I mean, look, you will get one or two guys that's like oh, a bit hungover or whatever. And they're like, mm, I'm not feeling... But a lot of the guys are responsible. Like especially once they've had one or two proper crashes, like... I mean, it's like MX crashes, like half your body is broken kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like once you've had one or two of those, like then you know you respect those big jumps and you don't play around. Have but you like, been on site when somebody had to be like uh, uh, hospitalized? Yeah, I was one of the worst ones was uh, Remy Morton at Loosefest mm. on the bottom hip. Where's like, Loosefest? Uh, that's in Belgium. Okay. At um, just outside Malmedy. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, Remy, like an Australian downhill racer, like super sick rider as well. He was cruising down the line and like just getting used to everything. And then there was a big hip at the bottom that Nico built. But like the landing was like, it was a massive hip, like mm. uphill, like quite a big step up. Uh, then the landing was quite short and then like to lose all your speed from that it kind of turned into the, it went up the hill again and then you would turn and roll down to get to the, the ski lift and go up again. But uh, so basically, if you overshoot it, you're landing into uphill really quickly. Like it doesn't ah, have a, it, okay. it doesn't, there's not a lot of flat bottom after the landing. It kind of starts doing this. Not so drastic, but like yeah. you kind of mellowed it yeah, out, yeah, but yeah. It, it's uphill. And basically what Remy did is he came in way too hot and he jumped, he jumped way Over too shot. far. He went wide. So he tried to get, make the most out of the hip. 
but he overshot and landed basically into an uphill with his front wheel down because he's hoping to land in the landing. So his angle was just like compressed. Well, he it. went, dude, like his fork like bottomed out and like sheared off on the one side. So like the, his whole stanchion was broken through. Like he smashed. I mean, like his bike didn't really take much of the impact, unfortunately, because a lot of the time on those big crashes, you at least crash on your bike. Yeah. Your bike suspension takes a lot of it, and then it breaks, and then you hit the ground. Mm. Whether that was like he went in at such a like nose heavy angle that he basically just crumpled into the floor with his shoulder in his chest, like, and then you know, broken ribs. Bro, so much. Like I think seven broken ribs, both his lungs punctured, his <sighs> hips were broken, his femur was cracked. Uh, a few vertebrae were gone. And is he so awake like, after a crash like that? Uh, like while the paramedics he, yeah, are I mean, there? He was like, he, he was snoring with his helmet on for quite a long time. I'd say like four or five minutes um, that he was completely out for. And then when he woke up, like he wasn't there, but he woke up and he wanted to stand up. And like, obviously he didn't like, nobody knew what was wrong. They knew that he was like proper, like it was not a funny one. Mm. So anyway, so he tried to stand up and like a lot of the medics at the time, I was like, dude, what are these dudes doing? Like yeah. they're mad trying to even let him stand up. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Because he's in such a state where mm. he's going to fight you mm. and he's going to cause more damage to himself fighting you than he will to just stand up and fall down again. So mm. they were just there to catch him when he, when he dropped. Yeah. And then they made him lie down and lie on his side so that if any fluid and shit was going in, he could at least like yeah, get rid recovery of position. So like, style. yeah. And then, uh, uh, yeah then pretty quickly after that uh, there was a, a chopper came in and, and lifted him out but like the I'm actually just getting goosebumps dude that, that like that's the only thing about my job that I hate bro like I've been around so many crashes and it's like people that you just get to meet and the dude's like the nicest dude ever and then you see him like lying in a heap like just about dead bro and it's like Okay, Especially this the is stuff real, that you like, film, it's like... Dude, it, it gets real sometimes, bro. It's like, it's it's rough. Like, seeing a dude fucking lying on the ground and you're like, he could die on the way to the hospital, yeah. bro. Like, it's... But what I, what I like, I, like, I'm just thinking of some of the videos I've seen. Like, especially that famous Sam Reynolds at Rampage. Yeah, dude. Like, even just thinking about it now, my hands get sweaty. Dude, yeah, because like, I understand I'm, just like a meter drop. Yeah. It's sometimes... And then, like, if you see the, the TV coverage footage of Rampage is long angle from the side so you see this ridge and the guy coming down you're like oh that's a big drop yeah then you see the gopro run bro and the ridge he's riding on is like two feet wide yeah and one foot is trail like the edge is like a little line of rocks mm -hmm. on the side mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if you miss something you going down like but this is the minutes. weird thing this is why i think cycling is not bigger like especially downhill yeah because they still haven't figured out a way to depict how yeah. dangerous and crazy yeah. it is like you, you have to be there like, like nothing shows, and this is why I think downhill mountain biking will never be uh, like a massive sport. They have to figure out a way to 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 translate how dangerous and crazy it is. I think like TV. like maybe maybe once VR and stuff comes out, then you'll be able to get a better feel. But like just on a little screen that you're looking at, like a photo or or a video, like if you've if you've taken a lot of photos and you've been to places you kind of realize that a little bit but yeah. like even still it doesn't work because but that's like, the thing that bummed me out when i started cycling you do this jump you're like fuck i'm rushing and then you get a friend to take a picture and you see it and i'm like i'm barely yeah like, it, it looks does, like nothing it never yeah. justifies like yeah. that's the thing when i went to potato trails like i asked duran like are you going are you doing night harvest he's like well those jumps are quite tricky i was like duran you can do fucking anything yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you go there and it's almost they're like steep, right bro yeah like those those jumps are like spines almost they like send you straight up and straight down so there. it's like the same like you go to dog fest like dog fest the pictures that you have like you can see how it's fucking big, crazy yeah. it is and then also i think the drones help out a lot yeah these yeah, days. yeah yeah especially with the speed and stuff because like, like the downhill like you don't realize that that guy is literally 70 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Like you don't see all the little roots and ruts. Even when you go through a rock garden, you don't see that it's this. Yeah. Buh, 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 buh. And also from the line that they're seeing, there's like a massive hole that your front wheel That's the other either. thing. Like if you lie down on a, uh, a cliff, it's sometimes fine to, fine to lie down. And then as yeah. soon as you stand up, that extra, like me, I'm two meters almost. Yeah. That extra two meters it is makes fucking a big crazy. <laughs> now, on top of a bicycle, it's exactly the same. So, yeah. like, sometimes standing at the lip, it's maybe like, okay, I can hit this. But then on the bicycle... Yeah, and you're standing further back and you don't see... And like again, I'm not like a real cyclist. Yeah. It's shit that these guys do. Like, I just wish that um, they could figure downhill mountain biking out. 
how to get that onto TV yeah, and to get justify to, that. The, the best thing for me, it, which makes it kind of difficult, I mean, on some videos and stuff, you can see, you get more of an idea of it. If they film with like longer lenses from like further back. Yeah. But like a lot of the tracks are in trees and stuff, so you don't even get a yeah. view of it. But and you when, can't do two, three kilometers with a yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't keep keep it going like creative style. Like for there, it's just like coverage. But it's but the same with Formula, Formula One. one. Yeah, yeah, literally yeah. saying the same thing. But yeah, it's just, it's exactly the same. But Formula One has figured it out to make it like exciting. Yeah, but only when you get like those cockpit cams, are you like holy fucking shit like yeah. i can see the whole track from the view from above mm. the dude sitting in the car is like sitting with the steering wheel like above his eyes he can see like maybe like 100 meters or 200 meters ahead of him he just mm. has to know the track like know where all the corners are and you, you see from above you're like oh that's fast like beep, yeah going around and you're like you know what i wish they could do is like you know when you have athletics and the, the 100 meter sprint you have this camera that just follows on this line yeah like yeah, this yeah, electrical yeah, yeah, cable yeah yeah, yeah 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 i was like fuck imagine they could do that that with downhill mountain biking you they, just have this thing that follows yeah, they, all the way they down. do that a lot on like in in videos on like, and movies yeah. and stuff they do like lots of cable but doing cam, that but yeah, live yeah for live would be just it's just because it's like a mission to take it up and down and for tv stuff needs to run and all like, the trees all and the yeah you know the yeah because like some some spot will work but like that's where for a video you can look for a trail for like three days yeah and then you find cool the section will work whether for downhill race you'd be like well that's, that's like watching rampage live it's also like wind comes up the rider car and drop in you've got like 10 15 minutes where you just wait so it's like it's, yeah. a, it's a weird sport to fill like yeah. football 90 minutes action and it's Rugby. it's that that's where like it's it's how can I say it's easier to film but if you want to do it for TV then it's difficult because mm. like rugby you know TV, your game yeah. when it starts it's going 45 minutes there's a break another 45 minutes done mm. riding like you say there's wind well what do you do with your viewers on TV for like 20 minutes yeah you know you can't like so it's actually better to not do live stuff with this kind of thing like that's why the the main edit for me of Darkfest is my favorite thing because that's like what's been filmed over the whole week and like everything gets put together all the highlights yeah. pretty much and then you get like a 10 to 15 minute edit of like all the best stuff that's happened yeah because yeah. like with that i mean we're there you're sitting for the whole day you wait there's like media teams there's everybody's waiting for the riding yeah. you go up at like six o'clock and the wind's blowing you stand around for two hours you take no yeah. shots everybody yeah. goes back down again like you, you you yeah you can't guarantee anything so like i mean you know in in a stadium you've got no wind you've got yeah. nothing so you would you like, enjoy working with nitro circus uh, yeah i mean i'd have fun with him for a while uh, like if if i had to but that's not your around, style uh i mean I, I would enjoy it but it would just become like very samey because it's it's the same setup in the same place all the time like over and over and over mm. so it kind of does get a little bit like i mean obviously every place will have a slightly different uh, thing to work with like i mean if you're in a different stadium you might have something cool to work with yeah. or, but um yeah i mean I, I would i would enjoy shooting them it would be a challenge like yeah. shooting every, anything different like things almost everything gets boring after a while if you do the same thing too much yeah but like it just makes you want to be or like need to be more creative and look for a different way of approaching it yeah so you can either go to different spots and shoot them kind of in a similar way and mm -hmm. move around a lot or yeah. you can shoot the same thing and then force yourself and that's kind of what's happened to me with like a lot of our local trails like yeah. i'll go back and back and back and i'm shooting the same jump like a hundred times over yeah but every time i'm like oh, i'm going to a spot that i'm comfortable with and i'm like i know i have a shot like this i'm not going to get anything much better than that yeah look for something else even if it's not as good i'm trying to find something different and i'm trying to like you know get get something else out of yeah. it instead of just going back yourself. into it yeah like i've got that with my business now where i'm like i've done this training session so many times yeah how can you for the sake of my you? business i've got to hire someone that's got to do it with more enthusiasm because yeah. i'm going yeah. to start destroying my own business yeah if yeah, i don't find it I want to give a shout out to <laughs> Mark Gordon because, <laughs> you know, I spoke to Chris, uh, G Spot. Yeah. If it wasn't for G Spot, I wouldn't have cycled. Yeah. And Chris told me the same. The only reason why he got back into cycling was yeah. G Spot. And I, I wonder how many people can say G Spot helped them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish G Spot had four lines that you can follow each other all the way down. Like, <laughs> if I was a trail builder still, yeah. I would do it for free. Yeah. Where I'll make two lines yeah, all yeah, the yeah. way down G-spot because it's the perfect yeah, yeah that you can do like terrain. duels yeah duels races you all fucking way, yeah. race each other down yeah, there because so, that clay there is perfect man like so if it sense. wasn't for G-spot I don't think I would have ever gotten into cycling G-spot's yeah. like perfect because you can hit the berms you can hit everything there's um, margin for error is small the type of jumps that you can start yeah. practicing on my biggest accomplishment was the uh, I feel 
when I started cycling, I took a picture of the last jump on G-Spot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, I want to be able to do the big one. And <laughs> after a year and a half, I could do it. It was sick. And uh, then they rebuilt it. Yeah. And then I even did, did the bigger that one. one. It was sick. Yeah. And then the last time I did it was super sketchy. And half an hour later, I felt like throwing up. And I never did it again. <laughs> I was just like... And that was one of my biggest accomplishments. Yeah. I did the fucking big jump a few times. Lance uh, Morris, I need oh, to yeah, give yeah, him yeah. credit because um, oh, our style ranting. is fairly similar. Like, don't get that high. Like, Chris goes slower. Yeah, and pops, yeah. Pops and fucking whips. Where I'm just like, speed gets me yeah, over yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried to go, I just followed Lance Morris. Yeah, uh, he, one of the most underrated guys, yeah, I no, think. Dude, he's super good. Like, I remember him as a kid. Like, I was friends you know, with And he's not going to go so around good. trying to look for credit. No, like, no, He's no, just no. low-key. No, and he, dude, like, when he was a kid, he used to kill it, bro. Yeah. Like, I haven't seen him ride recently, that's, but I can imagine. He's that's why I think cycling is also struggling. It's because you need a lot of money to get involved in the thing. Yeah. Um, be, you know, getting sponsored to go to the World Cup. But, uh, so I followed Lance into quite a few jumps yeah. at the same speed. And I'm like, I don't trust myself, but I trust Lance. So just follow his speed. And what I loved about him is like, he was so stoked. Like, you'll, you'll be in the air, look backwards to see yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah, to make sure that you did, And then yeah. when I landed, he's like super stoked for you. Yeah. And so he helped me with that jump. Um, yeah. So, uh, But that's exactly like, I mean, exactly what you're saying is exactly what happens at first. Mm. And like, those dudes are looking for that exact same feeling. Yeah. They've just been doing it so long that like their jumps are like three times or well, like, 300 times the size but yeah. like it's it's exactly the same feeling like following their buddies like also checking behind because there they've got like hours to look back and like yeah. so it's, um, and it's the sad like, thing just for me about like a lot of the local trails like even if you take that last jump at g-spot yeah. like sick like launch or lip or yeah. whatever but the landing is not really in sync the yeah, landing super small also like a lot of those lips are a little bit too i mean not too small you can ride whatever's there yeah. but like it's it's normally especially for beginners to have like such short steep lips they're kind of more like skate lips yeah so they're really sick but like when you hit it with a bike your wheelbase is longer than the jump is mm. so your front wheel's already in the air before your back wheel is so a lot of people get bumped yeah. over and i mean there's been like a couple of nice epic clips of guys like yeah popping over and going over the handlebars and stuff so for beginners it's a little bit dodgy like yeah it, it would almost be better to make them less kicky and yeah. make them a bit just longer. the angles like, a bit like exactly. 30 degrees just, just because a, a bike has like a wheelbase this long and, and yeah all, you know and i know mark gordon is a skateboarder yeah so he's used to skate stuff so he's yeah. used to building like a lip that's for a skate thing so you get but even i mean it's still sick like yeah. don't get me wrong like i'm not but even the road anything, gap but like i never did the road gap although i sometimes drove past it or cycled past it i'm like it looks so easy but the only reason i don't do it is because a lot of the obstacles are not built with the exit strategy yeah like you're either landing it or you fucking bailing because the amount of people that i heard that did the road gap and they end up in the little field on the left and there's a few fucking yeah. weird rocks and shit there it's a bit like that well, i don't understand why but i don't want to but it, I, i'm just now mentioning yeah, yeah, that no, because it's, it's yeah. famous i find it with a lot of trails yeah like you're either doing it or there's no margin for error like let's build a two meter wider landing a little bit more like g land yeah I, I always said fucking doubles. Hmm. Like if you want people getting into the industry, let's build tabletops that, yeah. like, so they did that now at the board. I don't know if yeah, you saw yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen that. And I'm like fucking there, respect yeah. because this is going to help the industry. Hmm. You've got a bunch of tabletops. Some of them, it's still going to kick you, but you can yeah, at least but, get the basics. Yeah, but now. that's the thing is like, if a kid is doing that, he's learning how to ride and learning how to build. You're giving yourself yeah. two skills instead of Dude, just but one. But in 10 years, these kids are going to be fucking crazy. But that, that's, I mean, like, that's where Justin and like all those guys started. Like they started building like sketchy things. Yeah. Like, like I said, potato trails, dude, like. Yeah. If dude, guys, Ryan, like he's if, been fucking in the industry so long. Yeah, you know, dude, if the guys now have had to go and ride potato trails how it was like 10 years ago when i started shooting there dude mm. like they wouldn't even ride they would leave their bikes in the car yeah it was so shit but like now their skills and the trail building has like gone up so the little kid's going to build a sketchy lip then he's going to get bucked once or twice and he's going to realize build it a bit better then like so then he's going to learn how to jump the jump and yeah. learn how to build so then he's going to build it a bit bigger and he's going to get better and it, before you know it like yeah. you're up to what those progression guys are progression but that's that's the sickest thing about hell like 
there's so many things for little kids and for for people that are skilled because mm. like the jump lines it's on a slope and all of the jumps kind of run sideways down the slope and the top is like just a like a little flow line like carvy things with like tiny little gaps in between yeah. the next one is just like a row of little tabletops so little kids can learn to jump and stuff uh then there's a few more like bigger tabletops going down so you can kind of progress mm-hmm. through those mm-hmm. then there's a small line of doubles with like lots of hips and stuff and then another line with like a bigger trick jumps and stuff yeah. like that so there's literally like going from easy to more difficult yeah. advanced down the slope and it's like literally we've needed something like that for years yeah no well done to everyone it's uh it's a pity with all my brain damage and spinal injuries that I can't do it anymore. Do you even just come to one day and just like chill and watch the guys? Yeah, ride, it's, I, like, it's too difficult for me. Like, uh, yeah. uh, I'm bummed out about the whole thing. Like, I got too involved. The politics got me out of the industry. You know what? Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, 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 and yeah, everywhere yeah. I go, I have slightly beef with everyone. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, just pull Not out. for me, new hobby. Yeah. Like fairly shortly after stopping cycling, I got to like swimming two kilometers. Yeah. Like I got like deep into that. Then I got into cutting out alien infestation on the farm. Yeah. Like three <laughs> hours of just cutting. So I get big into my hobbies. I get yeah. super passionate and people look at me and they see this big guy with, and I'm the biggest softy in the world. My th- When I'm passionate about something, I'm like, my skin's that thick. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, and no, I took too much damage with uh, stuff that I love. And I'm like, you know what? Just, I'm not strong enough to go. It feels yeah, like yeah, going yeah. back to an ex-girlfriend when you hang out in the cycling industry. Yeah, if yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know exactly. What Quick you shout mean. out to any other local riders. I know we mentioned other one. Duran is one of those yeah, great guys for me also locally. He's, and he's also like such a like undercover. Duran, dude, Duran right? Van Eden or what's his name? Yeah, yeah. It, just just normal Duran Van Eden. <laughs> but we, we, uh, we've done some funny projects with him and called him Duran Van Eden <laughs> when, he, uh, when he gets in, in, in character. So but he's yeah, one he's, of those local guys that I've also, like, I've asked him a couple of times, how would you respond to this? And he's like, well, unfortunately, it's like that. You know, he's so mellow, he's so dude, chilled he's, out. I'm yeah, like, he's, so cool. he's like, he's like our local Nico, pretty much. Like, mm. he's one of the nicest dudes, like, the most chill guys, like, also super friendly, like, always, like, yeah, such a good dude, man. And, like, like, way too quiet. Yeah. Like, Nico's exactly the same. Like, if he wasn't the if most If one amazing, person was allowed to have an opinion, but that person doesn't, it's dude, like, whatever you guys no, want to it's do. Like, it's like, Nico doesn't, he's so humble that he, like, almost does himself in. Mm. Like, he's such a nice guy that it's actually bad for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because he puts everything else first. Mm. Like, he's the best dude to be around, and I wouldn't want him to change for a thing in the world. But, yeah. like, when I hear what he gets paid and what other people get paid, I'm like, dude, you're on the same level as that yeah. guy. Or like not that far beneath him that you're getting paid like a quarter of his salary. Like yeah, 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 you yeah. are one of the best dudes in the world. Like if you were slightly more like pushy and a bit more and Duran's the same, like he doesn't push with sponsors. He's such a nice guy, he always kinda wants to be like on the back foot, like accepting something, not going and asking yeah. people for stuff, you know. So like to and he's like super sick on a bike, bro. Like yeah. I always forget because he's such a nice dude and like I don't shoot much downhill anymore. But then yeah. when we do like trailblaze and stuff, I see him like roasting corners and I'm just like from like all the other riders that we're shooting with are really good and nobody's like hitting that corner even and then, close to like what and then doing. it's like I, I saw the at the Helderberg trails the I think it was the Western Province or the SA Champs I he's not so concerned about speed he's fucking whipping shit dude that that's like that, it's like he's got style and he's got yeah, passion yeah, yeah, and yeah. flavor and I'm like that nah, is so I, cool I love that dude man like and he you know, he's such a like he's such a sick rider because he's like that like mm. I, I've seen him at some races and been like yo that dude is so fast because he's like blowing up this corner yeah. and blowing up that corner and then like I see the results at the end and I'm like bro he's not even in the top 10 or anything but then yeah. I see like Andrew coming past yeah. Andrew Nietling and I'm like Bro, why does he look so slow? Yeah. And then you see him disappear like behind trees and you see the trees going past like <laughs> Yeah. And you're like, he's not going slow, he's just not hitting stuff. Yeah. He's not losing speed. So like Duran's way of riding is super sick for me because I love taking photos of guys yeah. exploding corners and being like visually the bike. It's like- exactly. It's super sick to watch. But when you actually look at his speed, he's going fast into stuff, but he's exiting normally quite slow and then picking up speed and slowing yeah. down and picking where the Andrew will like just barely touch corners and like yeah. hover through stuff and keep his speed all the way down. Mm. So like, but like I say, for a racer, it's better to be like Andrew, but to, for me, like shooting with Duran is super sick. Cause yeah. like, yeah, if he goes into a corner, you know, the bike sideways, you know, the rocks and like everything. And Andrew is hot shit, no? Yeah, Andrew is really good, DH rider. Yeah, 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 he was really sick, man. And other riders locally, that's a... Uh, uh, 
that uh, you can think of? Theo Erlandsen. Like okay. whenever I shoot with him, I, we don't actually shoot all that often together. But like whenever I shoot with him, it's super. Anyone around. that you think deserves more sponsorship or some support? Like if people watch this, they must go check them out. Yeah, I'm actually gonna, gonna get you in now. shit now. No, I just like I think everyone. I mean, there's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys that put in work and stuff. But like most of the guys that put in work have been getting kind of what they need you know like yeah. yeah if if you put in work you're going to get the results so like if you don't put in work you probably don't get it but yeah i can't really think of too many guys that are like stand out that that really i mean like the guys that are already getting help like murray like yeah i uh, wish that he can get as much help as possible murray I mean, murray Lobsher, the, the street bmxer that we've got okay. that's like super good like re- and like that guy's also really good at like tech street stuff but he's yeah. also amazing at trails he's like mm. he's really good at like so many different things um do we need more skate parks and half pipes and all those type Dude, of things? Way, in the country? way more. And like the problem is, what happened to Boogaloo's and all of those? That things? that got taken down because they uh, put flats on the other side, like ah, okay. of where it was, and it's obviously making a noise all day, so people would complain. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the place wasn't making that much money being a skate park in like yeah. one of the biggest freaking malls that's so got like one of the highest rents. Mm. So uh, so yeah, it just wasn't it wasn't going to work. Um, but the problem is they've taken that away and nothing has been like back yeah. to replace it because mm-hmm. we get, I mean, like I hate sounding ungrateful, but like all the skate parks that have been built like in Cape Town in the last, like, I don't know, like five or 10 years, it's either been built really badly or it's just stuff like everything is under knee height. Mm. And you're like, bro, yeah. go to X Games, uh, go to X Games, and you don't know what to do, bro, because you've never looked up at a coding yeah. before. Like, you can't, you can't expect. Like, I mean, I always use the analogy of like a fish only grows the, to the size of the bowl. Yeah. If you keep a shark in a tiny little bowl, well, it's going to fill the bowl up, and then you're not going to do anything. But if you put it in the ocean, it's going to get. So yeah. If you expose all of our people or our, our skaters and bikers and shit to like proper parks with big mm. stuff they'll be able to ride it and they'll get good at it but like yeah. i mean i went to reunion island a couple of years ago and they have dude the sickest parks and you must see the kids there bro killing it like yeah there's like this young little skate it's the, the most interesting thing to me was their scene is like so i mean they're only like on the other side of madagascar but their scene is the opposite to us there's almost no skateboarders tons of scooter riders and quite a few rollerbladers and mm. i was like what the hell is going on in this place bro you see the little kids skateboarders and scooter riders